Sakura is an ugly, repulsive loser who is barely able to stay on a tightrope. Students talk about how he recently got into another fight and how he is nothing but trouble. Even the parents talk about how dangerous he is. Everyone believes he's too dangerous to look at, which is understandable given his lack of interpersonal skills. They criticize his look, citing his refusal to tint his hair black. Even the color of one of his eyes is off, which they use to conclude that he must be cursed. Everyone thinks he's disgusting, and the boy eventually falls off the rope. We then meet Sakura for the first time. He explains that he prefers the powerful and doesn't care about the weak. Some guys around are harassing a female and asking if she wants to go somewhere. She wants to break some eggs over their heads, but that would be a waste of wonderful eggs. The guy advises her not to act so arrogant, and he prevents her from leaving. Sakura then reveals that what he despises the most are weak individuals who believe they are strong. Sakura intercedes with the gang of harassers, telling them that it's too early to be acting that lame. The leader attempts to attack Sakura, but he is one of the types that Sakura despises the most. Sakura easily dumps this guy and wonders what's going on in his head to make him believe he's powerful when he's not. Sakura asks that they memorize his name and face so that they may warn all the vulnerable people they know to flee when they see him. Sakura is a psychopath, as he also wants them to know his name so that they may inform all of the strong people where to find him. He declares himself to be Sakura Hakura from Furin High School. Sakura walks away from these jerks, but the girl stops him to express her gratitude. Sakura is perplexed and wonders if she's talking to him. She verifies that she was, and Sakura makes it plain that he didn't do it to help her. He just beat those people up because they irritate him. Sakura denies her invitation to eat something, but she feeds him anyhow. She can tell he's not from this town, and it's unusual for anyone to come here. She says that the group he had just fought has been causing a lot of trouble and the town's public safety has become non-existent. She acknowledges she is not from this town and introduces herself as Takabana. Sakura is perplexed as to why she is being so friendly since most people would be terrified of him, especially after he just beat up five guys. Sakura reluctantly consumes his food when she asks him to, but he is astounded by how delicious it is. He wonders if her restaurant takes off, but she corrects him because the dummy is attempting to say takeout. Takabana points out that his eye and hair colors are all off and he wonders if she is bothered by it. She is more amazed than anything, but the paranoid Sakura believes she wants to fight. Sakura is astonished because most people are turned off by his appearance and insist that he dyed his hair. Sakura argues that appearance does not matter in a fight, which is why he came to Furin. Furin students are noted for having the lowest marks, but they are also the strongest fighters. These are the students who fall through the cracks at other schools and win themselves at Furin. Every day, factions fight to see who will come out on top. Their passion for fighting is so strong that they even fight on holidays, and Sakura is determined to become the top dog. Takibana reminds out that this is a lofty goal, but Sakura reveals that in actuality, he is as dumb as a stone and just understands how to fight. However, nothing sounds better to him than competing for first place, and this location is ideal for him. Takibana quickly realizes why he's in uniform even though school doesn't start until tomorrow, he's excited. Sakura, ashamed, explains that he had just relocated and didn't have anything else to wear, but she teases him even more. Our boy Sakura, as usual, resorts to fighting and insists that the disagreement be taken outdoors. Just then, one of Takabana's senior customers nearly forgets his to-go bag until Sakura reminds him. As Sakura walks home, he considers how bizarre the entire incident was. The elderly man handed him some candy and encouraged Takabana to thank him. Sakura is unaccustomed to receiving so much adulation, so he refers to the entire community, including Takibana, as odd. He points out that he is wearing a delinquent school uniform, and his appearance is also weird. It does not make sense for anyone to thank him. Normal people would be wary of him and unlikely to trust him. Sakura once picked up someone's wallet, which they accused him of stealing. Takibana then says that while Sakura made the right decision in coming to Furin, he will never be the top dog. Surprisingly, she claims that he may not even beat anyone there, let alone be top dog. Sakura points out that she has no idea how strong he is. She acknowledges that he may have great muscles, but stresses that he will not be able to become top dog. The difficulty is that he is completely alone. Sakura grows enraged and screams that he isn't so weak that he needs anyone else to win. As he leaves, Takabana adds that she is not referring to physical strength. She suggests that he go meet some Furin kids, as he will understand. A group of hoodlums is causing havoc nearby, and a poor lady cries for rescue. Sakura runs into the earlier group, 
and the leader is taken aback by his presence. He calls our boy Furin trash, but Sakura simply ignores him. The commander explains that he did not forget his face and mocks Sakura for his appearance. This guy is taken aback when he finds this is Sakura's real hair and eye color. They assumed he was merely doing some bad cosplay. But he points out that being real is even more disgusting. Sakura smiles, as this is the expected reaction to his appearance. This is the disgust he has grown accustomed to. Yet it is acceptable because he has given up on that end. Sakura, on the other hand, still wants to believe that he is valuable. If he can defeat the person in front of him, he will feel superior to them. The trouble is that Sakura can't quit thinking about how Takabana informed him he wouldn't be the top dog because he was alone. The leader proclaims that his gang will wage war on Furin because Sakura punched him. But Sakura isn't paying attention. He's still focused on Takabana's words as he hits the leader again. And he declares that he isn't the one who avoids people. Sakura expresses his honest views regarding his appearance. It does not make sense how people behave. He understands better than anyone that he appears strange, but he has never done anything to those who offend him. This is simply who he is. Sakura begins hitting down on this large gathering of thugs. He believes that as long as he is the strongest and finest combatant, he will be the top dog. There is no connection between being alone and this. The gang tries to assault him all at once, but it is ineffective because Sakura is considerably more skillful than them. Sakura immediately engages any opponent who approaches him, and the combat is surprisingly one-sided, despite Sakura's numerical disadvantage. Just then, one of the thugs kidnaps Takabana, but he pays the price for this reckless move when Sakura knocks him unconscious. Takabana expresses gratitude, but Sakura reiterates that the goons only irritated him. They attempted to use a knife, but he instructs the idiots to keep the battle clean. One guy tries to sneak up on him, but he ends up learning an important lesson. Sakura repels even more of them, but he is hampered by the need to stay in one location to guard Takebana. He questions why he is defending her in the first place and reminds himself that helping others never ends well. Sakura continues to defend herself, but one of the attackers eventually uses the knife to slit his leg. Sakura is in a tough place right now and wonders why he doesn't defend people. He wonders again why he decided to help her and prepared to take a bat to his skull. Just then, someone interrupts the onslaught, and Sakura notices that the stranger is dressed in a Furin costume. This guy unexpectedly stopped the bat with his back and warned Takibana not to notify anyone that she was in danger. This guy kills the bat wielding and informs the punks that they have caused a huge mess in this community. When his companions come, the guy is enraged and informs the gang that they are in serious trouble. Backup has arrived, but they are dismayed to see so few opponents, as they did not all have to come to battle. Sakura is in complete amazement, unable to comprehend why Furin is protecting him. The thugs are afraid to meet Haragi, but they are convinced they will prevail because they outnumber them significantly. Haragi instructs the others to make quick work of these people, and they begin to completely smash them. One of the guys attacks Sakura, and Sakura is trapped in a bad situation because his leg is immobile. Haragi protects him again and instructs Sakura to step aside if he is injured. Sakura is enraged, pointing out that he is not his employer and explaining that the goons are his to fight. Haragi simply instructs him to cease moving around because it makes it difficult for them to protect him. Sakura is utterly taken aback, and he glances around to see that the entire town is rooting for the Furin brothers. Sakura can't believe what he's hearing, and Takibana reminds him of how she mentioned the town's public safety was almost non-existent. However, this was only true until two years ago. Everything changed, thanks to Furin's students. The first thing they did was place a notice board near the town's entrance. It states that if someone causes trouble in their community by injuring people or property, they will be the ones to purge them, regardless of who they are. Takibana explains that somewhere along the way, the town's residents gave the Dread and students a new name. Because they fight to safeguard a town, they are known as the town's Bofurin, Windbreaker. After the fight, the entire village comes out to thank the guys. The fan pupils, once considered as low-grade hoodlums, are now well-respected in the community. They still battle a lot, though. They are adored by everyone, and most importantly, they are needed. Sakura is astounded by how different this community is, as the combatants are treated as heroes. They appear to be thugs, and they fight often, but no one is terrified of them. Sakura is overcome with emotion, and he is surprised when the town's residents tell him that he did an excellent job holding on his own. A small elderly lady even tries to tend his wound, but Sakura can't handle it and asks that everyone stop. Takabana calmly begins tending to his wound, reminding him that she told him he was alone. However, she admits that she could see immediately away that he wasn't choosing to be. She can't quite figure him out, but she does explain that the people in this town require his strength, 
Sakura is overwhelmed by everything that is going on, so he declares that he does not need anyone and refuses to get involved. However, Takabana is eager to point out that his behaviors convey a different message. He reminded the old guy of his bag, and he fought hard to protect her. Takabana points out that he hasn't given up on people, and he doesn't need to. At the very least, she says that she will not turn her back on him and requests that he turn towards her as well. Takabana feels confident that this is the path that will lead him to his desired outcome. Sakura is still unable to absorb anything, so he dashes towards the others. He leaps into the air, pointing out how the delinquents appear to be playing hero now. He concedes that becoming the town shield sounds really amazing, and he completely destroys the gang's leader who is terrorizing the community. Everyone is shocked, and Sakura wonders if anyone will actually remain by him there. We then discover that this is the narrative of how a low-level person who only knows how to fight became the town's hero. Sakura eventually arrives to Takabana's restaurant, enraged that she has to carry old Grandma Sato around. She's afraid she'll get wounded getting off his back, but he simply urges Granny to speed up. Grandma Sato surprises our son with her dismount, and he is unhappy because she told him her hips hurt so much she couldn't walk. The old lady expresses gratitude, but Sakura is still unsure how to respond to such generosity. Takibana stops him from leaving and offers him some lunch because today is his entry ceremony. It's still early, so she concludes that he is eager to start school. He denies it. But she perfectly understands because there are so many interesting personalities at Furin. Just thereafter, a child named Nairi comes, falling flat on his face. He wonders how Takibana feels about his new uniform. But Sakura tells out that he still has the tags on his jacket. Nairi removes all of his clothing tags, and Takabana informs Sakura that they will be in the same grade. Nairi observes Sakura's odd hair and eye, and Sakura suspects he has an issue with them. Nairi is taken aback by his attitude and concludes that Sakura must have had a difficult childhood due to his constant worry. Nairi seeks to understand out why a nobody like Sakura has come to their community. Sakura is offended, but Takabana reassures him that Nairi is like this with everyone. Nairi passionately emphasizes that Furin High is no ordinary school. Members of both Furin rose up to protect the people. They defend the weak and defeat the wicked, making them heroes of justice. Everyone who comes to Furin admires them and wants to help safeguard the village. Nairi is one of them, yet he wonders why someone with no ties to Furin, such as Sakura, has come to their community. Sakura makes his objectives obvious, revealing that he is there to grab the top position. Protecting the town is excellent, but there are a lot of powerful individuals here, and Sakura simply wants to be the best of them. Nairi becomes serious and advises him that he should not mention things he would never be able to do. His reason for expressing this, however, is that he is concerned Sakura would go bald. Sakura has had enough of his little comedy routine, so he insists they fight, although it is late. Nairi must go since he intends to conduct three rounds of town patrol before the admission ceremony. He announces that he will be a hero of justice beginning today, but as he walks away, he demonstrates his clumsiness. Takibana comments on how amusing the boy is, but Sakura cannot believe a nerd like him wants to be a hero of justice. Takibana is astonished to hear Sakura comment on someone else's appearance, but Sakura meant that males like him are the kind that always back out of battles. Nothing is lamer to him. Takibana claims that is only an assumption, but Sakura reveals that he has seen it a number of times. Takibana then pauses to teach him something. She observes that the coffee fruit is a very different hue than the coffee beans she keeps in jars. The lesson is that if you only look at things from one angle, you'll never perceive their true form. She believes he should not make such rapid conclusions and encourages him to get to know people better so that he can determine what they are truly like. Sakura genuinely absorbs this crucial information, but he assumes she means Nairi is a good fighter. Takabana is dissatisfied, wondering whether he only worries about fighting. Sakura remains certain that he is correct, even after he has left. Just then, he is stopped and given some complimentary bread. He's perplexed, so the baker explains that fearful children are often helping out around town, and he simply wants to give back. They recognize Sakura as the person who stood up to the gang the day before and note that everyone is talking about him. Sakura does not know how to receive praise and leaves, but they insist that he bring some sandwiches to lunch. As Sakura walks throughout town, he notices that several other people share his sentiments. Sakura has no idea what's going on and wonders what's wrong with everyone in town. They're being far too friendly to a guy like him, but Sakura sees he was only anticipating they'd treat him horribly. Sakura is astonished when a girl asks him for help. Nairi is assaulted in an alley after preventing a man from pestering a girl. The guys simply mock him for believing he could protect the town, and they say that he is the one who requires protection. 
Nairi tries to ask them to return it, but he only gets shoved around. The lads are astonished when Nairi declares that individuals who create pain or harm in the town would be purged by Bofurin. The guys all chuckle and point out that only guys on superhero shows talk like way. The leader becomes irritated and declares that it makes no difference whether Nairi is a windbreaker. He is the one who will be purged. The person prepares to assault him, but Sakura arrives just in time to save Nairi. Nairi is taken aback and wonders why Sakura is protecting him, but Sakura barely notices him. The bullies laugh because Sakura is there to help his friend, but Sakura is offended by this. He admits that it is not true, and he despises weaklings who believe they are strong. Sakura declares that it makes him sick, prompting the bullies to demonstrate their abilities. Nairi is concerned for his safety because he believes Sakura will be unable to fight them alone. But there is no need to worry because the guys are all knocked out seconds later. Nairi is amazed that he dealt with them so quickly, and he wonders who Sakura is. Nairi is afraid of him now, but he thanks Sakura for his assistance. He is certain that Sakura is disappointed that someone like him is in Bafurin and attending Furin High. But Sakura just states that he was not saving him. Sakura refers to him as a typical pretender and cautions Nairi to be aware of his own limitations. Nairi explains that he was always beaten up in middle school. One day, he was saved by someone from Furin, who he would typically be afraid of. However, at the time, the person seemed quite cool, and Nairi aspired to be like him. Nairi comes to Furin to become just as wonderful, but he breaks down as he finds he is simply pathetic. Sakura reflects on how he imagined Nairi was the sort to back down in battles, yet it's evident that he stood up for himself. Sakura informs Nairi that he is a weak fighter, but there is a chance he isn't completely lame. Nairi is stunned, and the girl he saved approaches to thank him for standing up for her. She also praises Sakura, but he wants to leave. Nairi stops him again and takes out his small book. He bombards Sakura with inquiries about his height, weight, blood type, and hobbies. The child goes crazy examining Sakura and taking notes on him. Sakura interrupts him, so Nairi explains that he simply enjoys gathering information about guys he likes and thinks are cool. Sakura simply tells him to do whatever he wants, and Nairi uses this as an invitation to observe Sakura up close and personal. Nairi offers to tour him around and discloses that, while he may not be useful in a fight, he is the finest guide for the town and its inhabitants. Sakura is astonished when Nairi declares that he can guide her all the way to the top. Nairi must then persuade Sakura to move on, but he is preoccupied with eating because he becomes quite hungry after fighting. Sakura is blown away by how amazing the bread is, and Nairi becomes engrossed in it as well, but he remembers they need to get to school. The two ultimately arrive, and Sakura is excited because there will be a lot of people like the boys he met earlier. Nairi finds the class roster, and is happy to discover that he and Sakura are in the same class. Nairi is impressed by the other names on the list, but he doesn't know them personally, they are simply people he admires. Sakura does not believe it is important who is in their class but Nairi reminds out that they will be spending a lot of time with these people. Just then, Nairi is taken aback by one name in particular, and Sakura points out that he has lost all vigor. Nairi eventually gets over it and begs Sakura to be kind to everyone in class, encouraging him to smile at them. Sakura assumes he is joking, but Nairi informs her that members of Bafurin banded together to safeguard the town. Sakura is not from there, therefore the males will be upset, and they will question why he came to Furin. Nairi believes it will be critical to demonstrate that Sakura is innocent and not Bafurin's opponent. Sakura, on the other hand, isn't listening since he's warming up. Nairi wonders why, and is surprised when Sakura answers he's just preparing ready for anything. Nairi is disappointed that he did not listen and reminds out that as an outsider, even a minor misunderstanding may turn the entire school against him. Sakura doesn't care if everyone turns on him, and he tells Nairi that he is there to fight his way to the top. Sakura enters the classroom, and Nairi is startled to notice that everyone is staring at him. The class is full of tough-looking students, but Sakura couldn't have asked for better. One student recognizes Sakura, but Sakura immediately raises his guard. Nairi apologizes and recognizes the student from his book. Nonetheless, the student claims to be Leonardo DiCaprio. Sakura falls for it at first, and Nairi had no idea this cold-faced dude could be such a jokester. Nairi knows his real name is Suo, and Suo claims that his eye patch keeps an old Chinese ghost in his right eye. Sakura loses his rage when he learns the boy is only talking, but Suo becomes serious and approaches Sakura. The situation becomes tense as Nairi thinks that people from out of town are being treated as abnormalities. Sakura prepares for a fight, and Nairi is concerned that there may be no way to stop it. Just then, he is surprised when Suo pats Sakura on the back and thanks him on being the star of the main street brawl the day before.
Suo tells to the other pupils that before Haragi came at the brawl, Sakura was the one protecting the community. Nairi was unaware of this, and the other pupils began to gather around Sakura. There were speculations about an unknown student wearing their uniform, and they are pleased that this individual did a wonderful job assisting the town. They're a little too near for comfort, but Nairi decides that this is preferable to them turning on Sakura. It's evident that they won't consider him an enemy, so Nairi relaxes because the person he dreaded earlier should be fine with Sakura as well. The boys still don't understand why he came to Furin in the first place, so Sakura explains that he came for the top spot. They're all astonished, so Nairi tries to explain that Sakura isn't there to hold them down and beat them up. Sakura claims that he is, but his new friend advises him to let him handle it. Just then, a table is tossed, and it's a terrifying student. Sakura shows excitement on his face, but Nairi urges him not to attack this guy. He is the most dangerous student in their class, and possibly the most dangerous in the entire school. His name is Kyotaro. Sakura declares that he prefers battling mad dogs like him, and Kyotaro threatens to destroy him. Kyotaro delivers a hard punch, but Nairi is taken aback when he finds Suo has swiftly moved him out of the way. Sakura dodges it as well, complimenting Katero on being the type of person he anticipated to see in Furin. Kyotero becomes even more agitated, but this is exactly what Sakura had hoped for. Suo is hyped that things are heating up, but Nairi wonders what he finds amusing. Suo informs Sakura that made a mistake by insisting that he'll become a top dog in front of Sujishida. Sujishida suddenly launches a surprise attack on Sakura, but he dodges it flawlessly because Sujishida is moving at 0.5x speed from his path. Sujishida has been visiting their school since middle school, and he is the only one who was given the privilege of calling himself Bafurin before officially starting the school. Sujishida keeps attacking Sakura, but Sakura keeps dodging flawlessly. Suos informs Sakura that Sujishida worships the top dog so much so that he earned the nickname of the top dog's fanatic. Sujishida tries a low attack to take down Sakura, but he dodges it easily. Suo keeps edging them on so they continue the fight, but his classmate advises him otherwise. Suo mistakes his advice for a change of commentator, but his classmates tell him they want the fight to end so outsiders don't get hurt. Sujishida tries a power punch, but he only catches air. Sakura dodges his punch spectacularly, teasing him about punching his aftershadow. Sakura suddenly launches a kick that catches Sujishida squarely on his jaw hurting his nose. Everyone is shocked by this. Sakura continues making fun of Sujishida, teasing him about being a fanatic and not having the brain capacity to think for himself. Sakura is surprised that people think that Sujishida can beat him when he only has enough ick to follow orders from someone else. Sakura and Sujishida are still facing off in front of the spectators. They are about to resume their brawl when a voice suddenly comes out of the announcement speakers which stops them in their tracks. The speaker tests the microphone first, but then he gets confused wondering if the speaker is on or not. A director informs him that the speaker is on, and he loudly welcomes everyone to Furin. The direction informs him that he's talking too loudly and warns him to lower his voice so they don't get noise complaints. Sakura is pissed that he got interrupted when the brawl was just heating up. He urges Sujishida to continue their brawl, but he notices that everyone has become zombies who are somehow commanded by the voice from the speaker. Sakura wonders who the speaker is, and the speaker introduces himself as Hajime, Bafurin's primo. Sakura realizes that the speaker is the top dog of Bafurin, and he's hyped that he can finally get to know about the school's strongest student. Everyone listens attentively, waiting for the announcement Hajime is about to make, but he suddenly tells them he has forgotten what to say. He advises them to enjoy their youth to make up for his short-term memory loss. He advises them to live a life that matters and make a lot of memories since they are in high school. He informs them that they'll be hitting the beach during the summer, and he advises them to grab some shaved ice. Nairi wonders what use shaved ice will be but Sujishida suddenly pounces on him, wondering if he has a problem with it. Nairi suddenly tells him he has nothing against what Hajime said. Hajime knew they enrolled a lot more students than usual, and he informed everyone that they may not all be carried along with the school activities. He hoped that the population density wouldn't lead to a fistfight on the first day, and he advised the students to get along. Nairi escapes Sujishida's grasp and Sujishida uses this opportunity to wipe the blood from his nose to hide the fact that he was in a fist fight. Suo informs him that he can't hide his guilt because everyone saw him fighting. Hajime informs everyone that it's important they defend the town because they were given the name of Bafurin which obligates them to protect people and their property. He tells everyone that the announcements are done and he tells them to get some lunch. 
Sakura wonders how everyone was able to pay Hajime so much attention even when he wasn't in the room. He realizes that's the kind of thing a strong fighter earns. Suo suddenly comes in between Sujishida and Sakura and advises them to make up with a handshake. Sakura refuses to apologize to Sujishida because he threw the first punch, but Suo informs him that he can't hold such things to heart if he wants to become a top dog. He asks Sujishida what Hajime would think of him if he told him he was involved in a fistfight. This thought makes Sujishida hold his hand out for a handshake with Sakura, which surprises Sakura. Nairi urges Sakura to shake his hand as quickly as possible. Sakura decided to shake his hand, though it felt weird because he hardly touched people outside a fistfight. They both crush each other's hands, gritting their teeth aggressively, but Suo was happy their youth was blooming. They both release their hands from the handshake and Sakura's classmates suddenly surround him. They commend him for landing a hit on Sujishida and they praise his flexibility while landing the kick. Sakura realizes that people have been so nice to him since he moved unlike previously. His classmates suddenly notice he's quiet and they wonder if they choked him to unconsciousness, but he informs them that he can't be choked out like that. An older student suddenly informs them that they're going outside. Sakura is so pissed, they have to go outside after just entering the building. The senior tells them to head over to the schoolyard, and a Hiragi scolds them for taking so much time to come outside. Sakura recognizes Hiragi from the previous day when he saved Kadoha at the cafe. Hiragi suddenly rushes at Sakura and drags him out of the crowd. He scolds him for failing to keep the fact that he saw Kadoha the previous day a secret, but Sakura is more pissed that Hiragi is spitting on him. Hiragi informed him that if others heard that Kadoha was in danger, it could lead to several unfavorable occurrences. He urges Sakura to keep his secret and not tell anyone about the events of the previous day. He threatens to begin coughing unpleasant liquids if Sakura fails to do so. He informs Sakura that he registered under an overpowered general and Sakura is surprised by this. Sakura returns to the crowd and Nairi asks him about the confrontation, but he tells Nairi that nothing happened. Nairi wonders what kind of person Hiragi is and Sakura informs him that Hiragi tends to stress himself unnecessarily till he gets a stomach ache and has to take drugs. Nairi notes this down which seems weird to Sakura. He informs Sakura that Hiragi is one of Bafarin's four devas, which are generals that act as captains for a class for all three years. Sakura thinks that they are the first platoon under the generals, but Nairi informs him that there are four squads under the generals the Taman, Jikoku, Zacho, and Komoku squads. He informs him that they are in the Taman squad, as Hiragi orders them to split into groups of four and five. He tells them that a second or third year will be assigned to them, and he encourages them to follow their lead and learn what needs to be done. Hiragi tells Sakura and his group to follow him, but Sakura is adamant about going because he doesn't know where they are going. Hiragi informs him that they'll be patrolling the town. While they are patrolling, Sakura wonders why Sujishida is in his group, and Hiragi informs him that Yumamiya asked him to keep a close eye on both of them. Hiragi figures out that Sujishida and Sakura already had a brawl, but Sakura informs him that it was Sujishida who threw the first punch. Things get tense and Hiragi comes between them and tells them to walk opposite ways to avoid conflict. Sakura is bored because they're just walking instead of defending their town against would-be intruders. Hiragi informs him that they would be going on the offensive if they do that, and he advises Sakura to see the importance of their walk. He informs Sakura that they can scare smaller gangs away while walking with their uniforms, and if they do get into a fight, it would be defensive because they don't need to make the first move. Sakura is bored by Hirag's babbling but Hiragi informs him that he isn't very likable as he's just a brawl lover. Hiragi suddenly notices an old man going up a service ladder and he rushes over, warning the man to come down before he hurts himself. He tells his squad to come over and help the man and the man thanks them for their help. He informs them that his shop is always tagged whenever he paints over it, but he's glad that the occurrence is now less frequent, while Nairi is glad to provide some help. Sakura is pissed off that he has to help an old man paint a wall. They finish off the work and Hiragi informs the man that they're done, and he rewards them with steamy treats as thanks. Hiragi sympathizes with Sakura because he only has fun whenever he fights. He informs Sakura that they were once masochists like him until they found fun in helping others. They keep patrolling the streets till they stop at a train track underpass and Sakura figures out that the bars are beyond that point. He looks at the wall art and remarks that it looks ugly but Nairi tells him not to make such remarks because the walls have ears. He informs him that they're at the border between Bafurin and a rival team's territory. 
He warns Sakura not to cause any trouble beyond the train tracks because they have their own rules beyond that point. He informs him that the team that rules beyond that point are called the Lion's Head and that they believe that strength is everything. Sakura is intrigued by their mantra, but they suddenly notice a third middle student running towards them from the Lion Head's territory. Haragi realizes the kid won't make it past the tracks in time as he slips, but Sakura and Sujishita suddenly rush to his aid, taking down one of the lion heads chasing the kid. Nairi is surprised that they are interfering with things in the enemy tough, but Sakura and Sujishita inform him that it's the enemies that are interfering since they have a Bafurin member in their turf. The other two lion heads, Kuruma and Eruma, begin making fun of their member for being taken down with one hit. Sakura is surprised that they're making fun of their comrade, but another lion head suddenly walks into the scene and they're scared out of their minds. They bow as the new lion head informs them that he came to check things out because he saw one of their comrades was sent flying. Hiragi is tense because the lion head's second in command, Togame, has shown up. Togame wonders what Bafurin members are doing on their turf, but he suddenly notices his comrade's body on the ground which surprises him. Hiragi informs him that their member was chasing a Bafurin member and Togame wonders if it was Sakura and Sujishita who took down his member. Sakura is surprised by how laid back Togame is and he realizes that Togame is the real deal. The down member suddenly gains consciousness and he's pissed that Bafurin members interfered with matters in their turf. He continues to rant but Togame suddenly beats him up because he is insulted by how weak a member of the lion's head is. Haragi tells him to stop hurting a member of his team, but Togame informs them that he's no longer part of the lion's head. He informs them that only weak people lose, and the lion's head doesn't need someone weak. Though Suo had heard about this lion's head culture, he wasn't pleased to be experiencing it firsthand. Sakura informs Togame that the lion head's rule is lame, because they claim that strength is everything. Tagame wonders if Sakura is feeling high and mighty for defeating a weakling, but Sakura informs him that he's just disappointed that they're so weak. The Lion's Head members think Togame will take down Sakura for his impudence, but Togame is interested in Sakura's hair, so he lets it slide. Togame is pissed that Sakura talks so fast that he hardly hears him, so he decides to beat him at a proper venue. Nairi is panicking because he's sure that Sakura and Sujishita's actions will lead to conflict, but Suo calms him down. Haragi takes his drugs to calm himself down, while Nairi scolds Sakura for provoking Togame because he is sure Togame would have let his kick slide otherwise. Haragi informs him that Togame wouldn't have let it slide because he's the most territorial guy in the lion's head. Nairi is bummed out by this, but Haraji apologizes for not moving first during the conflict. Haragi tells the others to head back to school, and he tells the third middle, Sasaki, to come with him. Sakura notices Haragi's expression when they get back to school, and he's surprised that Haragi looks so scared of reporting back to Yumamiya. He wondered what Yumamiya was like, because he sounded so easygoing on the speaker. Haragi opens the door to Yumamiya's place, and everyone is surprised by the place. Haragi approaches Yumamiya, but he's so hyped by how well his eggplants are doing, he decides to barbecue them with members of the school. Sakura notices that Yumamiya behaves like an adrenaline-infused elementary school kid, and he wonders if he's strong. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.